Today we are checking in with an athlete who does pretty much anything she sets her mind to. She's a double Paralympic and world champion in not one, but two sports. She is the incredible Kadena Cox. Kadena, thank you so much for speaking to us today. Um, I mentioned there, you know, you do many sports. You win medals in athletics and cycling at the Rio Games back in 2016. Lockdown has been intense for all of us. How are you doing? Um, you mentioned 2016 and that feels like so long ago now. Um, just the beginning of lockdown seems like it was ages ago. I've had some really good blocks of training. Um, I've had some really good blocks of my mental health and then I've had some absolute crashes. Um, so it's just been up and down. And I think the hardest thing for me is I've not really been able to see my family. I'm a proper kind of family girl. So it, it's been tough, but um, we make it work. You mentioned there just how long you've sort of been isolating. So is that because of your MS and the, the extra risk that you perhaps are at if you were to catch COVID? Um, my last training session um, down in Loughborough, we kind of looked at the list of kind of those who are more vulnerable and MS had come onto it. So we made the decision to go into, um, into lockdown a lot earlier. There's no extra risk of catching it, having MS, but it's the risk of complications after because of kind of MS related problems. Um, and it's just not worth it for me. Um, when you've already got a chronic condition, you don't want to throw something else in and just kind of, you're, you're playing <laughs> roulette really, and you just like debating whether it's going to um, affect you badly. With having multiple sclerosis and being isolated in lockdown, how is it managing that illness? Because it would, it would seem that perhaps that makes it more challenging if you're not able to access physio or the usual treatments that you would maybe get. So the bonus is I'm a physiotherapist myself. Um, I've got a lot of equipment. <laughs> I've been doing things in weird and wonderful ways. So I'm having kind of check-ins uh, three times a week with the physios. They do a face-to-face -face call like this and we, uh, we try kind of work out how we can get things sorted. But yeah, then you get the challenges of early on in um, kind of lockdown, my medication ran out because um, the prescription hadn't been sent to the external company that do my medication. So that was scary for me because I was like, okay, I'm in isolation now, but now I feel like I really have to isolate because I'm not even on any preventative medication for my MS. So that was scary. Of course, the, the Paralympic Games that you've been building towards, being pushed back by a year, it's interesting speaking to athletes across the sporting spectrum in their reactions to it, because of course the natural thing for an athlete is these four year cycles, games or championships as a focus. For you, as someone with MS, you've spoken before about the fact that you can't plan a four year cycle because you don't know what your illness is going to look like in a year's time and how it's going to be affecting you. So for you, what did it feel like when the Paralympics got pushed back? I have planned this year and I planned next year kind of how I'm going to take my downtime. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to being able to kind of just enjoy the post games. My last two world championships were just super intense for me. and My body was kind of in a place which wasn't great mentally. I wasn't in a great place and you kind of building up and you do just need that like that end point. So it's just like, okay, I've done it now. Now I can deflate. Just that whole, you, you've been through that build-up, like we're so close that like the build-up's like, it's intense and you're thinking, okay, just cling on for these next few months and then it'll all be worth it. I always worry that between the games, I can have another relapse, which will impact me quite heavily. And then I, I'm essentially not able to compete to the same level. Um, I'm not able to get back into training. Like there's always that worry. It's weird because we, we learned kind of back in 2015, um, when I do absolutely nothing, that's when my risk of relapse shoots up. Um, so it's just kind of balancing and managing everything. How have you kept yourself ticking over then? Like you say, you know, you, you have to keep active. It helps you manage your, your MS. And just to add to a, a complication to, to life and to, to how you're kind of competing, you've got to prepare for, for sprinting, for athletics, and for cycling, because you compete in both and you've got Paralympic gold medals in both. Don't make it easy for myself. Um, but no, it's been, it's been fun, to be fair. Like, I've been able to work on things that I wouldn't necessarily get to work on. I do two sports. Like, it's hard enough to do everything for one sport. I'm kind of, you pick and choose what you, you can work on just because I just naturally don't have the time to be able to do it all. And because I have two seasons that run kind of one after the other, I never have an off-season. Um, so when people naturally have an off-season in athletics, then my cycling season starts. Um, I've got 
three bikes in my house currently. <laughs> um, so I'm able to do, I've kind of got my turbo, I've got my rollers, and um, so I'm able to do the bike stuff. But it'll be nice to get back on the track. So I, I, li I started last week, actually, I got back onto the athletic track for the first time, which was nice. Um, but still waiting to get back onto the cycling track. Uh, it, it'll be good to be on the boards. <laughs> You've, you've been really open always really about yourself and about your experiences you know not just to do with um your sport but also with your your mental health so i know last april you spoke out about how you were experiencing disordered eating and the body image battles that you've had especially in a sport like athletics where you're on track not wearing very much and you posted as well during this lockdown period about what your body looks like now and how you feel about it and how different it is to you know, events at the start of the year. How have you managed that that issue and, and that battle that you have with yourself during this time, which has been really intense on everyone's mental health? I feel like people, there's so many people, and, and me included, you feel like you're so alone um, and you feel like it's just you. Um, and I feel like speaking out, people realise that they're not alone and then it's easier to deal with. I mean, I'm less active than what I normally would be. Um, and with everything that's going on and kind of just kind of the ups and downs of this time, like it's been a strain. I, I felt alone. Um, I'm just, it's just not been fun being by myself. I've not really enjoyed it at times. Training has felt hard. The game's changing has kind of been a blow to me. And that my way of dealing with things is in a way I'm, I'm trying to be kinder to myself. So I'm trying not to punish myself as much for eating badly. But then all that happens is I pile on the weight and I look in the mirror and I see a person that I don't recognise. Um, and I continue to look and I feel disgusted with my own body. And I kind of think about the fact that I then got to, at some point, get back onto the athletics track and be judged. Um, and as a black female, I'm, I'm built different to the majority of the girls that I race against. They're all kind of tiny. They have so palsy, the majority of them. So they're... Um, their metabolism's different, so they are all really tiny anyway. And I'm, I'm built, I mean, I've been compared to Serena Williams. Not quite Serena Williams, I'm not giving myself that one. Um, but like I am, like I am just more muscular and just stronger and it's a, it's a different look. And then I put on a bit more weight and I just feel like, well, now I'm giving them more reason to, to speak about me. And any female, you kind of look at the body and there's always something wrong. Like I, I look at people and think, oh my God, she's got an amazing body. I guarantee you that a female's thinking, oh my God, I hate this about me. Um, like, oh my God, look, look, look at her legs, they're amazing. And it's always the way, you like, there's always something you can criticise in yourself. Um, and I think we just need to be nice to ourselves. And I, I've learned during this time that I really need to take a step back um, and try to be nice to myself. And it's just that finding that balance of, yes, I'm eating healthy, but it, it's okay to, you know, have a little bit of a wobble, like that's acceptable. But it's just that, be kind to yourself um, and for other people, just reach out to your friends and your family. Like if you, if you know they've got pre-existing issues, reach out to them, just check if they're okay. Like sometimes you just need an ear. Sometimes you just need to know that someone cares about you. And even if they've got no pre-existing issues, everyone is gonna struggle in this time. Like it is different. It's, it's nothing that anyone's ever experienced. So just checking in on someone, like you just don't know what someone's going through. Honestly, when people have messaged me, it's literally like there's been tears in my eyes sometimes when someone's just sent me just a, hi, how are you? Or just checking in and you miss you. Like the little things mean a lot. And yeah, we just need to keep checking in on each other and just be kind. Do you think attitudes are changing in athletics when it comes to bodies and what looks like an athlete? Because for a very long time, there was the mentality that the smaller and lighter you are, the faster you can run. Whereas actually now we know that you need strong legs if you're going to be breaking world records. You need muscle and muscle weighs more. Do you feel that change coming? And does that does that help you at all as you battle your own sort of body image issues? I do think within kind of the sporting context, so kind of the people around you, it is, it is better. I mean, um, within one of my sports, cycling, power to weight is just, it is a thing so it's, it's always okay the lighter you are the more powerful you are the better so weight is still a big thing within cycling so I do think they've still got a little way to go um but I think people are looking now at the fact that different shapes work and within cycling it, it is a thing like people have looked at kind of how things have adapted I think a lot of the guys have kind of got bigger um as opposed to kind of going for being lighter and, and there are changes um but I think when you look at the media we still get slandered for not looking how people think we should look. It's hard, like there's always that negative, like, and I guess that is just the media there, they're always gonna pull something out. Um, 
as much as within the sport itself, within the sporting context, it is moving on. Um, the media seems to still want to cling on to this kind of perfect kind of body shape and how you should look, uh, kind of Ken and Barbie-like, I guess. <laughs> Finally, Paralympics now, 2021. You've got a goal to defend on the bike. You've got a goal to defend on the athletics track. And I've even heard a rumour that you're thinking about 2022 Winter Olympics. Two questions, really. What is the what is the summer Paralympic dream for Tokyo? And are we going to see you add a third sport to your bow and go for Winter Olympics too? Winter Paralympics too? I'm going to say, unfortunately, the game's been moved. It's kind of got rid of that dream um, just because it's just too close now. It was snowboarding that I was going to try to play around with. Um, but yeah, I probably need the two years that I would have had to um, kind of harness my skills. I, I'm, I'm a skier. Skier. <laughs> Not really a skier. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's going to, yeah, it would have taken some time. So it's something I will look at in the future. Like I, I still want to get involved in a winter sport, but Unfortunately, this cycle, just being the way it is, probably not going to happen. Um, I have titles to defend, no pressure. Um, I, uh, I, I lost my world record in, in the cycling um, earlier this year. It's given me a, a really interesting challenge. And to be fair, this extra time is, is kind of a blessing in disguise for me. Because um, I, I, I had a dream of hitting a time, um, what times I needed to hit for my opening lap. Um, and I was like, that, that, that would be like what I'd love to do. Now it's not a case of what I'd love to do. I have to do it. I'm excited. Like It's nice to have um, a good challenge within the cycling event because I was uh, quite far above the rest of my um, classification. Yeah, I'm hoping... The games, I'm hoping I can get more gold medals than I did. So obviously I got a silver and a bronze. Um, so I'd like to have... I mean, one would say that I don't want to have any other colour apart from gold. That would be the golden aim. <laughs> Um, and I'm, I am hoping to uh, pick up another event in the athletics, um, but we'll see how things go with the Achilles. Um, that, that, that has a, a large impact on how things go. So fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I may be taking up a new event and um, more gold, please. <laughs> Dina, I love it. It's like, can't go to the Winter Olympics. I'm going to pick up another athletics event instead. There's just, <laughs> just your kind of attitude towards it is just so incredible. Look, thank you so much for speaking to us today. And we don't speak to you before. Good luck for Tokyo in 2021. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, it's been a great chat.